We're here in Nashville, Tennessee to tell the story of a man who knows and loves the land. In song, he tells the story of the men who work the land. One of the greatest country music writer performers the world has ever known. Come with me into the grand old Opry House and watch our weeks of secret preparation unfold. This is your life, an American tradition with Ralph Edwards. Thank you and welcome to our show tonight. Coming to you from the home of the Grand Ole Opry in Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee. All right, y'all looking good. Hey, John. Hi, honey. Uh, John, I don't want to interrupt you, but I'd like to for just a minute, if you okay. don't mind. I want you to meet a good friend of mine all, right. all the way from California. Ralph, would you mind to come on out? This is a good friend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, You mind if we borrow your stage for a minute, Johnny? Right ahead, well, we need to, uh, because you see, uh, we we have uh, brought a whole staff out here from Hollywood, and a whole lot of surprising uh, people to uh, to Nashville to tell the story of a poet, a troubadour, a musician, a dreamer, a man of great strength courage and deep faith. <laughs> Johnny Cash, this is your life. Hang on now. Oh, shit. I think, I think June finally. There's been something about you that inspires people to believe in you, Johnny, and uh, their faith has been justified. From Washington, D.C., listen to a man who has had that faith, Dr. Billy Graham. Johnny, I'm sorry I cannot be there tonight. I wish I could be there in this great moment in your life. We've had several talks together, and uh, in spite of all the problems and the pressures in your life, you've had several things going for you. You've had a father and mother that believed in God and prayed for you. You've had a family that loved you. And this is a great deal in a, in a man's life. And I have been very proud at how you've overcome some of these great problems and temptations in your life. And I've been very proud of your growing faith in God. Johnny Cash. You were born on a little farm near Kingsland, Arkansas, in 1932. Your parents, Ray and Carrie Cash, did the best they could to feed a family of six children during the Great Depression era. With the election of Franklin Roosevelt, the New Deal is born. How'd the New Deal affect you and your family, Johnny? Well, it meant we had a... We had 20 acres of cotton land and a house and a barn and a mule in northeastern Arkansas in the wilderness. And my dad and my older brother, Roy, carved a few acres out for the first crop. Sure You're about five when you began to help in the fields, picking cotton. But in 1937, the mighty Mississippi swells and overflows its banks. Devastation covers the land. What'd you and your family do, John? Well, Daddy got us all packed up, and um, we caught the bus to the train that took us to the hills. And he My, stayed back. He stayed there, you? tried to save the place. What, uh, uh, now, uh, your mom asked your dad, how high is the water, Papa? And what did he answer? Well, it started out, it was, it was right lapping at the bottom step. He said, two feet high and rising. <laughs> it kept on until it was five feet high and rising. Yeah. He sent us to the bus. You catch a train to Pine Bluff, and, or a bus it is, in safety. A couple of days later, your dad arrives from Dias and tells the family the water has ruined everything as a result of that experience. After the flood waters recede, you and your family return to Dias, and you, John, attend the Dias grade school. I had you in my classes in school for a total of six years. The wonderful lady who taught you in grade school and high school, Mrs. Ruby Cooley. <laughs> Sit down here with John. Uh, was John a good student, Mrs. Cooley? Oh, yes, he was. He was 
to. <laughs> but that wasn't all it was either. We had plays every year, and the students themselves would say, which part is John going to say? And after he chose his part, then the others would try out. Yeah. Uh, did John sing in those days? Yes, and of course, the one I remember most, he sang his own graduation. Do you remember what you sang, John? At the graduation, I don't believe I do. What I was sang, it, Miss I Cooley? sang Trees, I believe, one Whiffin year. Whiffin the Whiffin Booth song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't suppose you got a gold record for that one, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Ruby Cooley, thank you so much. You'll, you'll see John a little later. In these uh, boyhood years, you love to roam the land hunting and fishing. There's a Cherokee strain in the Cash family, and a respect for the land and its creatures runs deep within you. You begin to understand a man's problems, and you write verses about them. The Korean conflict, you enlist in the United States Air Force, you end up in Germany. You borrow your first guitar and organize a group you call the Landsberg Barbarians. So here, for the first time on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry, is the sound of Johnny Cash and the Landsberg Barbarians. <laughs> Hey, John, I brought our old Gibson guitar. Just call the roll, John boy. The Landsberg Barbarians are all tuned up and ready to go. Your old Air Force buddies in Germany, now from Vicksburg, Mississippi, Reed Cummins, hey, and from Reed. Max Creek, Missouri, B.J. <laughs> Hey, hey, good. Good to see you, I buddy. think this is the first time America's ever seen the uh, Landsberg Barbarians, isn't that right, people? That's true. <laughs> That's right, Ralph. Yeah. In fact, we had we had quite a group over there. And all of us boys got together and we became, I think, the some of the greatest buddies in the world. Uh, Reed, is that the old uh, Gibson guitar there? Uh, yes, it is, Ralph. We call it the traveling guitar because all of the barbarians uh, picked on it, practiced on it from time to time. I guess maybe you ought to have that guitar gold plated Probably there. Probably should. Thank you, Reed Cummins and B.J. Carnahan. <laughs> One night in Germany, you attend a movie which inspires you to write one of the biggest hits of your career. What was the picture, John? Inside the Walls of Folsom Prison. And the tune? Folsom Prison Blues. After your honorable discharge from the Air Force, you marry Vivian Liberto, and you take a job as an electrical appliance salesman in Memphis. When I looked up and saw John, I had a real strange feeling. It was almost like seeing God. He and Luther and I became blood brothers right on the spot. Your friend and bass player in the famous Tennessee Three, Marshall Grant. <laughs> well, now, how did you fellas uh, happen to get together, Marshall? Well, it's uh, sort of a strange story. Luther and I were working at this garage in Memphis and with Johnny's brother, Roy. So uh, we were playing these guitars all the time, and uh, Roy says, well, says, I've got a brother in service. When he gets out, he says, this thing is pretty good. We'll all get together. <laughs> so we did. We, uh, we all got together one time, and we started uh, practicing in one another's house and so forth and so yeah. on. At that time, you all played rhythm guitars. Yeah, we were all playing rhythm guitars, and one night we were sitting there all playing these rhythm guitars, and we decided we had to do something a little different if we were going to do anything. So uh, Luther said, well, I know where I can borrow an electric guitar. John says, well, since I do the most of the singing, maybe I should stick with this rhythm guitar. And the only thing was left was a bass. <laughs> so that's how I come with the bass. And we, uh, we borrowed one. We borrowed a bass, and we didn't know how to tune it. And we had a friend that uh, drew us a sketch on the paper of how to tune the bass fiddle. So we got that. And uh, so uh, the three of us were together for 14 years. And of course, Luther Perkins died two and a half years ago. And John and I are still together. Right. Thank you, Marshall Grant. Thank you. Booked all over Tennessee and northern Mississippi as Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two. 
Now, your first major booking is the Overton Park Shell in Memphis, Tennessee. And that performance heralds the beginning of a new image and a new legend in country music. The beginning of a fabulous professional career and for a while, a crushing personal failure. <laughs> Offers begin to pour in. The merry-go-round begins to turn. Your life becomes a race, and the pace is a deadly one. You gear yourself to the pace. You try to make life a joke. Hey, John, you'll have to get those hundred checks out of your room. <laughs> your old friend and former manager from Thousand Oaks, California, Stu Carnell. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's this about the hundred chicks? We better explain that, I guess. I think so, yeah. My wife and John, we're talking about baby chickens. Oh. We, uh, we were going through Iowa and got a little bored on the one-nighter, so we stopped and got a hundred baby chicks from the feed and grow people, and we carried them on tour with us for about two weeks. <laughs> Kept them... Kept them in the drawers in the hotels. And... <laughs> By the set, time it was to set the bellboy after chicken feed. Right. <laughs> you had a rather yeah, unusual boy. group, I'd say, Steve. Unusual, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. The one nighters and everything. we uh, we had a lot of fun and. We were with a great man, a uh, real man's man, John Cash. Thank right. You, Stu. Thank you, Stu Carnell. Thank you.